What's good, YouTube? This is Boxing Wave, and we're going to just keep going down, chopping down this this card, this Riyadh season card from the other day. We're just going to continue on with the recaps. Gerald Miller, Andy Ruiz, draw. What do I think? Um, I think Gerald Miller edged the fight. All right, I think he should have probably won the fight, maybe seven rounds of five, maybe eight to four. Um, but the fight went as predicted. You know, um, Shout out to everyone that hit on a draw. You guys know I hit on a draw, predicted. Um, possibly a draw, but I was leaning towards Gerald Miller winning and, and pulling off the upset. Andy Ruiz, two years out the game, you know, two year layoff. Um, and, and technically it's even longer than that because in the last five years, he's only four twice. Okay. So it's been a couple of layoffs with him. Um, and just couldn't, just didn't know, you know, Gerald Miller, don't think he's nearly as talented as Andy Ruiz, all right? But it's about timing and being that Gerald Miller was actually committed to losing shape and, and, and losing weight and getting back in shape. Um, I thought that said a lot going into the fight, you know? And in my final prediction video, this is why I stated I was leaning towards him to win. And I do believe he won. Um, two of the judges had a score to draw. One of them had it score for Andy Ruiz, 161-14. I think that's a little bit ridiculous. You know, I'm not mad at the draw. Obviously, I'm not mad at the draw because I won. But even if they said draw, I would have been like, okay. You know, I mean, like all three judges had it a draw or whatever. But giving a 116-140 for Andy Ruiz is, is kind of ridiculous because Andy um, was definitely gassed after the fourth round or so. Um, he had a broken hand. I don't know at what point in the fight that he broke his hand. But he definitely has a fracture on in his hand because he showed us after the fight while they were still in the ring you know gerald miller was just disappointed because of the uh decision uh because he felt that he he clearly won the fight but andy took his glove off there and you could clearly see that something is definitely wrong with his hand um definitely a fracture in his hand and a bad one so i don't know how early in the fight that fracture came but look man when we look at the fight andy ruiz again better talent it's not I don't want you guys to get confused here. You know, when we pick against fighters, we, when we're trying to figure out who's going to win the fight, um, we do film study. You know what I mean? We we base it on past uh, fights and and, and, and and stuff like that. You know, the styles. And we break all that down. Andy Ruiz is a better talent. But if the guy is not fighting, he's not active, and he's fighting someone that seems to be a bit more motivated than we've seen him in more recent fights. Um, and plus, Gerald Miller is, you got to give him the edge when it comes to volume, when it comes to pressure, when it comes to size, when it comes to fighting on the inside. Andy Ruiz, we have never seen him backed up like this. We've seen him a lot of times he's coming forward because he's fighting guys that are rangier, that wants to keep him on the end of their jabs, um, that want to move and use the ring. Andy is not the guy that fights on his back foot for the majority of the fight, which is what he was forced to doing here because he fought a bigger man that is comfortable with fighting on the inside. And as Andy began to tire, Miller started trading even mid-range, mid-range, close-range, because Andy was tired, okay? He was tired. No, we didn't predict a broken hand, but he was clearly gassed and he was forced to fighting back on the back foot. And that's not his type of fight. So yes, he has a quicker hand. Yes, he won a, the majority of the early exchanges in some of the, few, the first few rounds. But once after the third or maybe fourth round, it was a clear difference in the momentum in the fight. And Jared, uh, um, not Jared Anderson, Gerald Miller started to take over. He was in control. He is the volume pressure fighter. Andy Ruiz pressures normally coming forward because he's trying to catch you with a counter punch and throw combinations. He's a different fighter. So with that being said, the fight went the way that Gerald Miller went. I thought he was the ring general. I thought he dictated most of the fight. I thought he performed 
and just was more consistent. I told you guys there was going to be some points in the fight that's probably going to be boring because Gerald Miller's style is not a pretty style. He's not the flashiest, cleanest puncher, okay? But he once he starts leaning on you and starts beating you up on the inside and outworking you and attacking the body, which is what he did consistently, throwing those combinations to, to the body of Andy Ruiz was a lot. You know, and everything Andy was doing, listen, Andy still let his hands go periodically, but he just didn't have the engine to match uh, Miller's energy. You know, he just didn't have it. And I thought he lost, you know. I think 7-5 is fair, 8-4 may be a draw, uh, which is what we got. But that was an L.A. draw, you know. Um, I'm happy we got the draw again because I hit. <clears throat> but overall, if we're just talking about the fight, I think, Miller edged the fight. I think he did enough to win. And he didn't do enough in the fight. You know, especially because he broke his hand. So, um, cool fight. Don't want to see a rematch. Uh, Miller had a, a great post-fight interview. Or not post-fight interview, but a great interview with, uh, you know, Fight Hub, I believe. You know, where he expressed, you know, everything going into the fight. How he didn't want to fight any more friends. You know, it just, it was a good interview. You know, it's showing that he had, he's showing growth moving forward in his life. Um, hopefully, he can continue to stay clean off the PEDs. Um, hopefully, he can continue to stay in shape. And, and he can still be better. And I think he needs to stay in the gym because you're 36 years old. You know, and there's more opportunities. I believe he's going to get another phone call for another fight. Um, and so is Andy Ruiz. You know, this is his first fight back. Um, as soon as he's, you know... Uh, gets in uh gets healthy with his hand um he too should stay in the gym and and live a boxer's life because like i've said in previous videos and i keep going to keep saying this because it's very very important now that the money is there now that the promoters are working together now that turkey al Sheik is part of the sport and saudi is is becoming you know a big stable um a big place to have fights you, you stay on your top. That should be all the motivation you need, you know, because if, if the money is there, now you have no excuse, you know. And for the guys that's in their 30s, mid-30s like these guys, you you cannot, you can't, you have to stay fit, you know. And this is why guys like Crawford, who's aging, you know, and I'll, I'll make a video on him soon. This is why he stays in the gym. You got to stay in a gym because you don't know when you're going to get that phone call. You know, Andy might get a call on his next fight against Parker in a rematch, you know, on one of these Riyadh season cards. You know what I mean? Gerald Miller might get a phone call uh, to, to fight, I don't know, Gile Jung or Dillian White or, or J uh, Jared Anderson, another big baby. You know, we don't know what's going to happen next, but we know that you guys are going to get paid. So... Do your part and stay in fit and, and be ready to perform, you know. Um, and that's the way I see it. I think the style matched up better for Gerald Miller in this fight. And even though he was the underdog, uh, I legitimately, you know, and in my final prediction video, I legitimately thought he was going to win because I just think that he just had the better advantages going in, into this fight. You know, again, it's about timing sometimes. And if Andy Ruiz was a little bit more fit um, and wasn't as rusty, I, I think he would have did enough to edge Miller because Miller was there to get hit. You know, and he was, again, he, he landed his combinations. But as far as consistency, I thought Miller did the better work. All right. So that's my views. Again, all these names that I mentioned in the Bacoli Anderson as far as future fights. They are still there, especially with these two. Um, you know, Andy, uh, he still has a name, you know. And there's still guys like Deontay Wilder out there. There's Gerald Miller out there. You know, there's Dillian White out there. There's still uh, Gile Jung out there. There's, there's a lot of people. Parker, you know. These are all good fights still. You know, whoever has a fault already in their top 10, top 15, top 20, throw them in there. Who has whoever whoever and put them on the, on the card and give us another 
You know, these guys could be on a, the same card in, in, in the next fights. So whatever we haven't gotten, let's get it. That's the way I'm looking at it, especially with, with these two. I don't think these two are deserving of a, a title fight. But I think, you know, they pick up another good win or two, you know. You never know. What if Triple D get stopped by Anthony Joshua? Put Triple D back in there with Gerald Miller. Maybe they can do a rematch. You know, better shape Miller against a more experienced Triple D. So I'm cool with these fights. As long as we're getting quality fights, I'm very, very happy as a boxing fan right now. All right. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, share the video if you could, and I'll see you in a, in a few. Peace.